Hello and welcome back. I'm Bebal Joe, and this is a tutorial for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Today, containers. So let me show you the main buildings for containers. Under storages, you have a container loading facility like this and a container unloading facility. Those are your two major um, buildings that you need for containers. There is a little bit of extra. Under energy, uh, engineering industry, there is a space for vehicles and containers large. You will need this one as well. Um, I want to place you here. And um, I'm not going to place one on this side, on that side. I will just place a normal cargo station. So you see how that works. It should be fine. And cool. All these are set up. While they are building, and they usually take a little while because they're relatively big, let's get a road connected there. And let me also show you the other building that we haven't built yet. There is a harbor building that you can also use. Now, harbors are not always easy to place, so let's see if there's a spot for it here. I think over here may work. Cool. It's just a large harbor. It has extra space for the containers, and that's all there is. So, yeah, this is the start. Let's continue by setting up our infrastructure. I want a regular cargo station there and here. And then connect those as well. Um, just because I know that I want to show you a couple different things. Otherwise we can't do what I want, want to do. So all this is ready. Now, how do you actually use cargo stations? Well, Treat them like warehouses with fancy things happening to them. I just want some power there. So if you click on here, it is a warehouse. You can only store, you can only turn cargo that is present in a warehouse into containers. You cannot do construction materials at all, and you cannot do fuels. But everything else you can put here. And you can see um, you have just a normal warehouse looking thing. Um, I do believe the total storage amount is a little less than the regular warehouse. You can, if you wanted to, connect several warehouses to the uh, factory connections, and it would pull from there. So the cargo loading station is an active building that will pull cargo. It will also push cargo. And, um, yeah, as many as you can connect. You can also do it with forklifts, but this is already factory connection related, nothing else. This is an active connection. Remember that. What we want to do is just build, or not build, but buy a couple uh, resources. I like to do chemicals because they're a little faster, because they take up a lot of room. And this will fill up. Great. Now, we still need engineers and workers. And we need uh, a power supply. So this building cannot function without power. I'm going to use a modded one because the bigger power plants just don't always work the way I want them to. Um, put this here, I guess. Um, and then I need some power for my rail. That's just how I have it set up. So I can show you what um, vehicles can actually transport the containers. So all of this, pretty straightforward, nothing too fancy. Um, a couple things are missing. We need fuel, because I will show you how the vehicles run. And then we need workers. You cannot do any container related stuff without workers. So let's put in some uh, building blocks here for workers. We also need workers for the power station, obviously. Um, but this should cover us for a little while. One thing we have left is uh, four rails. Actually get a train out here. Otherwise, we can't do anything. Cool. Um, and all that's building. And now, if you look here, we're still without power, because this building right now does not have fuel. Um, just an oversight on my side. But once we have fuel, you will see container loading progress. Great. This means it's turning stuff into containers. The containers will show up here. There's the first one, which is a little weird, because this is a container loading station. If you have too many containers in here, will overflow into the container station, but by itself, they won't just put them in there. Inside the container loading facility, you can set your different container types. 
You can change the color of your containers, otherwise I think they're just random. And you can change the size. There's a 10 foot, a 20 foot, and a 40 foot container. I'll just produce a couple of each so we can see how they how they differ. Um, next, how do you transport these? We have two options, and that's what I have here. You can either use the vehicle's container um, storage facility like I showed you before, or you can connect a cargo station. If it's road or train, doesn't matter. Either of those is fine. Um, this one, if you send a train here, or even a car, they will pull from the loading facility. So the containers that are stored here right now are available at this cargo station and at this um, storage facility. So you don't have to add a special cargo station. One little downside, which I'm a little disappointed by, your forklifts cannot move um, containers at all. You, you can't move containers with forklifts, but you can move them across factory connections. So it's a little confusing, but keep that in mind. Um, I tried it and you just, you can't. Once you have all of them done, um, let's just send a train out. And here is maybe a little quarrel that I have. I have all vehicles enabled and there are only three um, wagons or three, three open holds that can even move containers. However, not all of them can actually move containers and I'll show you what I mean. Um, Yep, just like that. Have you go. He's gonna get here. And he's gonna load stuff. Now look at this. We have four of the medium-sized containers. Uh, you can maybe barely tell, but these are two. It left all the large containers here. Um, you can place multiple containers as long as there's room. And if you look closely, I'm pretty sure this one could hold two more 10 foot trailers, just as a side note. But this one in the middle does not carry um, containers. Honestly, I am not sure why, but that's what it is. And it is this open wagon 1340 uh, 41.2. And it looks like the can load vehicles on flatbed is the um, guiding factor there because this one cannot load vehicles, so it can't load containers. So keep that in mind, but it only tells you the tonnage, not the length. The length, sadly, is not set nowhere but the cargo containers themselves. So you have to figure out what you can actually transport. But this guy's just going to transport now, um, back and forth, and the containers are just going to make it right to here when he's done, just like normal cargo normally would. And then this um, unloading facility will take the container and unload it into whatever was stored inside that container. Again, you need workers to get um, anything done here, otherwise you can't. Um, and now if you look here, it, it can move the large containers on both of the, of the, of the wagons. And that's great. Let's change this to this, and I'll show you how to deal with road vehicles. Road vehicles are a little, it's very similar, but not the same. Oh, you won't let me in there, please? Nope. <laughs> okay. We'll go around. No big problem. Okay, when these are done, again, you need an open hull. But not all of these can move containers. As far as I know, everything that says can load vehicles on flatbed can load a container. If they can't say that, they can't take one. However, all of these have different lengths. This one, for example, is an exception to the rule. This one says it can load vehicles on flatbed, but it can't load containers. And I'll show you that when it gets there. Most of these others can, and then this KMZ5410 is one of the longer ones that I know of. Um, this one is one of the few that can actually load the 40-foot containers. There may be other ones, but I know that this one can. Let's just set this up, just transport from there to there. Uh, start, and we'll just set up all the other ones too. And go, 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 go. And now, just check out what they're doing here. They're getting fuel first. This guy's still transporting the containers as they can. And now, this guy's coming out with 
you can barely tell, but this is a large container on the left and this is a tiny container on the right. So this truck bed has a total length of 40 foot plus 10 foot, so 50 foot. This one is going to load just small ones, I'm pretty sure. Again, this one can only load small. This one loaded three small ones now, so this one has a 30 foot bed length. Um, this one was the one that I told you, it says it can load um, vehicles, but it can't load, con uh, load containers. So you may just have to figure out which trucks can and can't load containers, because right now in the game it doesn't tell you. This one cannot load the long ones, this one can't load anything. And then you just set up the containers however you will here. You can change them, you can connect different um, container loading facilities um, to, to the storage facility and just pick them up from there. But the rest is really just set up your factory connections however you want them, set up your transport network however you want them. Trains can transport your containers and some trucks can transport your containers. The last thing, obviously here we could have a ship. Um, transport is exactly the same. These are just two large storage areas and the ships will just pick them up from either side. One side is just meant for cars and the other side is meant for a rail. But it doesn't really make a difference where you store it. Um, because it's just treated as one building, so it's one storage area. And all that's great. Um, last question you may have, why would you use containers? Well, I can show you right here. This truck has an official load capacity of, let's see, 5.9 tons of chemicals. Is that right? Let that guy come out. I want to, I can't click on the extra container. Okay. I click on this container and then I click on this truck um, it's not trying <laughs> I'm trying to make a point so this truck this truck can carry 16 tons of steel or some other things but when you load any of these containers on this is 8.8 um, .8 tons of chemicals and that just fits in this trailer and then you can add another 10 foot trailer and the 10 foot trailer is fitted another 2.4 tons so this trailer the 50 foot trailer can carry up to 9.2 11.2 tons of chemicals if you look at your covered holes even the large ones they can carry 4.8 tons of chemicals I'm just talking about the volume that you stuff into a container is a lot bigger than what you can normally carry with your trucks or even your um, rail cars. So when you use containers, you usually increase your volume that you can transport, but you can also increase your um, speed that you loaded onto vehicles or onto trains. The loading in the loading facility is not that fast, but then taking the container and putting it on something or off something is a lot faster than loading that item yourself or by itself. And that's all there is. Last thing I wanted to see is even the big, spot car, big, big box cars can only carry 20 tons of chemicals. Um, which obviously here, maybe not worth it to use a container for your rail unless um, you care about the loading speed. So keep that in mind. That's containers. That's how they run. And that's all there is to know. Oh, you can pick up everything from here like it's a normal warehouse. Um, nothing, nothing special there. Um, and that's how you... How you do containers. Hope you learned something. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, like and subscribe. If you didn't, let me know what else I should cover. But for now, thanks for tuning in. Bye.